Hey everyone and welcome to the Infinite Respawn Podcast. I'm Chicken. I'm Oak Tree. I'm Griff. What's up, guys? What up? Back is not I was here still waiting. Week. He's a cute kitty. You guys actually is over there for me, but um, you guys Where's he can't at for me? see it. I want to poke at him. Poke at him. Poke. <laughs> right there. Poke at him. Poke. Yeah. Okay. Pote at him. All right. I figured if <laughs> if he's missing today, then I'll entertain you all with a cute kitty. So here's. One of the cute kids. I'm the tall one. Hey, you can't you can't lose with cats on the internet. Too I know, bet it's not right? like a Jeff, right? So you That's just, gotta guarantee us at like least two extra upvotes. As a, you know, <laughs> two extra upvotes. What what is this? So Reddit? hit that like button now. Oh, folks. it's likes. Sorry, it's YouTube. All I all I ever think <laughs> is upvotes. I'm sorry, I'm ruined. Up, dude. Yeah. Come on, all of our fellow uh, redditors and Majorians. That's upvoting for you guys. No, you know what that is. Press that button. <laughs> what games is everybody been playing this week? Uh, I've played a few, actually. Um, I played uh, Untitled uh, Goose Game. Don't I don't beaten. ruin it for me. I'm super excited. I just haven't. I've heard okay, I will it. tell There's you this. Not much to it. They the found game. it's yeah. It, well, here's the thing. What they did, I think they did really well. Um, there are certain things in the game that, like, you get a list of what you need to do in each area in order to be able to unlock the next area, right? But what I think they did really well is they made it to where you could um one t you can you could find kind of hidden things like little easter eggs that you could do mm -hmm. and it'll mark it off a list that's got a bunch of question marks on it oh. once you've completed the game normally those open up completely and you can replay through the game and go back through this and do the stuff that For you didn't get to do before and people y who yes. just want to continue so, being a goose Yes, uh, and they did a really good job. I think, but they did a really good job of. First of all, you feel like a goose, all right? God, um, honking is accomplished. one of the best things, best things ever in a game ever. There needs to be more honking in in games. Um, but the because <laughs> it's just so much fun to honk. But press F to honk. They also right? did really creative things to do with the honk. So like, I don't want to give anything away, but it's it's fun. It's just Yay. absolutely fun the way that they did it, and the little waddle, the little waddle's cute. I'm looking you know? forward to being a goose. That's all you need yeah, to know about it's, my life. It's, <laughs> it's fun. It's fun for sure. Um, I really enjoyed that. Uh, it fits like. Are you getting it for Switch? I Probably, because I think the only okay. place it, to get it on PC is Epic Game Store, and I'm not doing that. It feels really good on Switch, um, and then eventually it's supposed to be coming to Xbox One and PS4. But cool. Um, but I, I think it feels really good on Switch. It feels like a it feels like a Nintendo game because of the fact of the graphics and everything else that goes along with it, the cuteness and everything that goes around along with it. So, but it's just beautifully done. Um, and the ending was satisfying. That's all I'll say. It was satisfying because okay. I was like, I was like, where are we going with this? To Goose Happy Land. And then, and then once you find out where the ending goes, you go. Huh. You know, and then it opens up the other to-do list. It better be my goose riding a party. Ferris wheel and eating cotton candy. That'd be fun, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the... Um, <laughs> um, so played that. Of course, played mine, some, some Minecraft. We built a lighthouse on Monday, um, which was exciting. And um, then I, of course, this week, uh, Shadow Keep for Destiny 2 um, was released. Uh, trying to get into Destiny 2 was very difficult to start with for everybody that tried to do it yeah, on day one I've because you had that. all these people that that had no money trying to get into playing for the first time Destiny 2, basically. Um, but uh, face. Right? Surprise. Did it <laughs> yeah, go? No, is surprise. it free to play? What do you mean? No, yeah, it's free money? on is Steam. It? Oh, okay. It's I'm free on good. Steam. You can play... That's how aware Shadow I am Keep thinking. Shadow Keep costs money, but the which is I think it's forty bucks, or you could buy the they got like a season pass version of it, like sixty. Well, this time last year they gave away Destiny Two on Battle.net anyway, because yeah, it was yep. BlizzCon last year. Oh yeah, yeah, they had two, yeah, ten days or two weeks right after BlizzCon to, to go ahead and free. get a free copy. So makes sense. Yep. Sorry, mm -hmm. keep going. Yeah, and so um, so now it's where uh, you. The new part of the game that they open, they they open up the moon again, uh, which from those people that played Destiny One know that you had the moon that was available to you. That's where some of the major plotline stuff happened um, from Destiny One. Destiny Two starts off 
the moon seems haunted. That's the only thing I could tell you without spoiling anything on it. Yeah. Spooky moon. Yeah, spooky moon. Um, and so it's gameplay wise very challenging. I like the fact that it's as challenging as it is. Um, so it does. If you go into an area you're not supposed to be in, you're gonna know it real quick. Um, and one of the things that I didn't like in Destiny One is you kind of happened upon those places. You would go down into a little bitty area and these random guys that you would never be able to kill were down there, but it didn't tell you what level you needed to be to get there or anything like that. Where what I like about destiny two and what they've done is you go to an area, you die, it pops it up on the screen. You need to be this in order to be able to beat this area. But I also like it because you, it raises your XP really quick. If you're not that level yet, like, so let's say it's supposed to be an 860 and you're at 800, mm -hmm. you still can kill everything that's there. It's just more difficult to do it. So it's like playing on hard mode, which I thought was awesome. So you could go through and play that way, um, which right now I'm at 850, I think, 845, 850, something like that. You have to be in 920 at least in order to be able to get into the raid. Uh, the raid was beat in six hours uh, after release, uh, but it was beat by like people that knew what the fuck they were doing when it came to being able to play Destiny 2. Uh, but I had lots of friends that are streamers that were that were trying to be the world's first on it and they were doing really well with it too, but it was evidently the middle part was really difficult and the last boss was hard to figure out what you needed to do. Um, and there were some people that didn't want to play that raid because they thought it was too mechanical. It wasn't, um, Running and shoot. it wasn't what they, yeah, it wasn't what they wanted, but I'm like, I, everything I saw was very shooty, but whatever. Shooty. Um, it's a new term. I it's, got it. It's the you're, technical you're scientific term. Y yeah. Shooty. Um, so, but I, I am enjoying the gameplay. I think that, um, and what was really nice that they did is if you started on Tuesday, there was no Vex in the game, in the on the moon or anything like that. And then um, now they've introduced a part of what is the goal of the Vex? What are the Vex trying to do, which have been around for, you know, from Destiny 1? What is their point and all that? And so they have this huge trailer that opens up when you, when you open the game now um, that, that talks about the Vex. And uh, um, they're the robot the ones, they're right? yeah. They're the robot ones, and what's kind of cool is I saw the trailer them... on accident. I happened to pull up a, a stream and it was just playing the thing. I was like, oh wow, this is really neat. This must be Destiny. Then the trailer's pretty fucking cool. It's yeah, a really cool one, them. like the way that they bring the Vex back to life and all that stuff in the trailer mm -hmm. looks really neat. But what's really cool too is they show some of the Vex and they look like um, they look like they've been in the garden area that they're at and they were just brought back to life. So it has shit growing on them Ew. and stuff. It's really cool. It's just like plants. You a gardener it's just in like there. plants. It just has plants. It has like a close up of one and a little leaf is moving on top of its head. Um, <laughs> which I was, it was, I, I mean, it was really well done. To Destiny too. I, I, I'm interested to see how the community embraces it and what happens with it now. Now that we know Bungie has complete control over it. Um, and it looks like they're trying to improve their product. Uh, I talked to a friend of mine that um, he's huge into Destiny, didn't like Destiny 2 when it first released, put you know thousands of hours into Destiny 1. Destiny 2, he's now put a ton of hours in after the, the last expansion for Forsaken, um, and now he's gone into this and said he's really enjoying it. And like I said, I like the challenging part of it. That was, I think it was one of the things before the mechanics were good, but it was... It, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of challenge. It seemed like it almost walked you to the areas you needed to go to where your guy would be able to survive, where now you can kind of accidentally wander into an area you're not supposed to be in and get your ass handed to you or you can try to survive. So I think I think it's done a really good job. It's a good mix of that. So, um, And then uh, we finally got back on the seas. We did Sea of Thieves um, this week. Uh, we, got to, we went back and did one of the, um, the boom... Um, the boom barrel ones and accidentally blew us all up. Good job. Um, Good job. Go team. Yeah. Well, we were, for some reason, no pants picked the one that happened to be in Devil's Roar. Mm. And so Makes I'm sense. on the last island picking up the, the giant stronghold barrel, boom barrel, and swimming to our ship. Well, the water heats up, it kills me. But if it if that's sitting inside the the boiling water, it explodes automatically, and I happen to be close to the ship, and so it blew everybody. Nice up. job. Yeah, so it blew up. Uh, no pants ended up dying on the actual thing. We ended up going back and being able to get most of our stuff, and then uh, there was one that we had not 
uh, dug up yet. So we dug that one up and took it back. So we still got 5,000 out of it, but it was, you know, it'd been nice to have nearly 10,000 out of it. So um, we fought the Kraken on the way back with a brand new ship with hardly anything on it. That was fun. Um, <laughs> I died several times because they've changed the mechanics on some of the stuff. Like we had a Megalodon that randomly fucking bit us. I'm st we're standing on the side and it was like, do, 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 do. <laughs> And I was like, what? Where'd you cut? Like, we heard it. We knew it was there, but normally, you know, they go off. They come back and rush your ship. Mm -hmm. No, they just decided to bite. Um, and then, so with the with the Kraken, this one picked me up, slammed me into the water, which I'm used to, picked me up again, held on to me, slammed me into the water again, picked me back up again. I'm thinking I'm going to get thrown. Oh, no. Third time into the water, hit me as hard as it could dead like i couldn't i'm like you gotta be kidding me really like no. they're just vicious as shit now and i'm like sitting there trying to angle myself to hit it with the sword to let me go do something it was crazy but uh overall it was that was a fun night too um i did end up with some problems with my um uh streaming pc though because it was uh it started bogging down i think it was just something wrong with my network here hopefully it's fixed now so i um, if I go back Was to the disc tonight, it's, it's thing? Because that happens too if you're running Win 10. Where it, like, it just uh, no. open your task manager, and a lot of times it'll say that your disc is at 100% capacity. And it's just bugged. You just got to restart your PC. Uh, also, no, it, I will say if you have Xbox Game Pass on there too, because I've had this problem, it will do something in the background, and you won't be able to see it's doing anything. Uh, and it will just bog the shit out of your computer. That uh, like I had to go week, through and just start. It? Yeah, I just had to go through and start closing everything, and then I finally got to that. And as soon as I turned it off, it, everything went back to normal. Yeah, it's like, like oh, it's like background it downloads, but it doesn't show See, it in it, your process. Or updating. Yeah. It, it didn't make sense because it was well, what it was doing was it was actually um, it was showing that my Streamlabs OBS was running at thirty percent or thirty thirty five percent. And I was running fine for an hour and a half, two hours. And then from nowhere, like that's when it jumped to 30, 35%. And then I started skipping frames, which is why I think it's a network issue. It was just hitting, it basically it was a backlash that was coming back at it. Skipping frames or dropping running. frames? Dropping frames. Dropping frames, okay, that is network. Skipping frames is your computer. Yeah, so. so uh, I've had enough like, I've issues. Done this. I've had enough fucking issues with enough of this to know that if you start skipping frames, it's your computer's having trouble, and they're just basically, as you're streaming out, it's just jumping over. If you're dropping frames, that means as you're streaming out, you're losing some as you go. So Yeah, well, you, I just, I've, I've dealt with it enough. I think it's, it's I, I've had this problem before with the network part of it, and so it'll, it'll fix. It's just all of a sudden something that happened. I think it was just Mixer having issues, and I was, I was getting the brunt of it, so um, either that or comcast was having issues. it may be oh, comcast surprised. because your your video today even is like i've noticed it's kind of dropping a here and there like not quality but it's like it's dropping frames every now and then mm -hmm. but chickens is not doing it but then again i always am the one that experiences all the issues which is unfortunate no, i was experiencing it, it too for a few minutes a few minutes ago basically you just see his yeah his going mouth like this and the words and, weren't yeah. matching up like it, it looked like an old foreign film <laughs> That's okay. That's I mean, it's one of the, the downsides of doing a podcast online, but that, that is where we're at, and Comcast needs to catch up with everybody else that's better than them. So. Yeah, which, and what's weird is, like, if I test it out, like, I'm running at 300 down and 25 up, so it's like, it shouldn't be a problem, but for some reason, it is, it is. and it's steady. Oh, sh Just because you pay for it doesn't mean that's what you get all the time. Oh, that's okay, uh, though. Uh, but I can test it consistently. <laughs> your quality is okay enough for what we're doing. I just hope it clears mm -hmm. up for your stream later um, and everything, because oh, yeah, I know how frustrating that is for streamers, especially. Hmm. So. Yeah, I start throwing shit. So at the end of the day, <laughs> I can't stand that. Can't stand it at all. Well, anyway, that's all I had. I was a lot uh, of games. Chicken and I have been playing well, obviously, but as far as the rest of what I've been doing, because I've had not a lot of free time this week because I took time off work, but that doesn't mean I was free. I was busy all week. Um, but I did, I played some more Dragon Age, which I'm surprised as many times as I've played Inquisition, I can still find new stuff that I haven't found before 
or find more efficient ways to do things that I haven't done before. I'm convinced at this point that you don't remember those things. No, like, I guarantee some things you found are like, them before, I've never been to this forgot. part of the map because I didn't do these quests or things or like that. Or it's obscure and you forget. Well, you know what? Either way, I get to re-enjoy it, so who cares, right? <laughs> I wish I could. Yeah, but your memory's ideal for this type of thing, to be fair. That's why you get to replay things over and over mm -hmm. again and still enjoy them where the rest of us go, okay, I got to take a couple years off before I can play this again because exactly. I remember everything that goes well, along for, with it. To be it. fair, for Dragon Age, it has been a little bit since I played last. So it's been... It's been about a year, right? Yeah, probably. Because I think the last yeah, time right. I played was when I was doing the Let's Play for it, which is about... Actually, it's about two years ago. Um, oh, wow. So, so, yeah, it's been a little while for that and everything. So that's surprising me. And then Red, okay, this is kind of a story about Red that leads into stories about me, but Red has been playing WoW with us, but he likes to uh, have a game running in the side monitor sometimes when we play, and lately it has been The Sims. And so we're playing, and I can't remember what we were doing, we might have been in a dungeon or maybe just questing, but he goes, oh my god, what is that sound? And it took him a minute to figure it out, his Sims is running in the background, like he hasn't been looking at them at all. And they're just, he's got autonomy on, they're doing whatever. He finally figures it out that it is the smoke alarm going off in The Sims. He goes to check and he's like, why is the Grim Reaper sitting on the couch there reading a book? Why is everything on fire? Why is there an urn? While he wasn't looking, the family he was playing had, like, they had a kid. And the kid was playing apparently next to the fireplace. The kid caught fire and died. And the two adult Sims are running around freaking out because they don't know what to do because nobody's telling them to put the fire out. The Grim Reaper came and scooped up the kid's soul or whatever, puts it in the urn, is just sitting around the house now. Like, that's what happens when you don't watch The Sims. <laughs> they do things all on their own that are just mysteries, but it's just hilarious that he took forever going, what is that sound? What am I hearing? <laughs> you have another game running, Red. Your Sims are dying. He's like, their kid died. Oh, well. I was like, what? What do you mean, oh, well? <laughs> and then, of course, that made me want to play Sims. So, I played Sims <laughs> 2, also. Uh, Sims 3. And they have an island place, which I've told you about before, because I was playing this family where the lady got pregnant, and then when she was having her baby... Like, Sims go into labor, and the, the Sim lady will just be like, all right, get in my car. I'm driving my husband to the hospital whilst I'm in labor and everything. Well, they're on that the, the island. the rowboat one, right? Yeah, this is the same thing. I forgot to take away her rowboat, and it happened again. It took her 48 hours to get to the hospital, <laughs> and at some point, Sim husband just jumps out of the boat because he's tired of it, I guess. I'm like... I forgot. He's like, I'm gonna get out of this motherfucker. I'm just gonna walk. I'll meet you there. Well, and the thing is, I you still can't... think it's funny though because it doesn't. Isn't she the one that's in charge of rowing the boat too? Yes. It's like something so like that. So her pregnant in labor self is rowing the boat for two days <laughs> to get to the hospital because it's a rowboat and it's slow. And I, I just and you can't cancel it. You can't be like, get out of the boat. She's like, no, I'm going to the hospital. I don't care what you say. I'm having a baby. It's like I know. That's why it doesn't need to take two days to get there. <laughs> so I took away her boat. I deleted it. I was like, no, we sold this thing. No more of that. So next time she has a baby, she will get into a speedboat that will take her there in like an hour. <sighs> I was just so mad too. I was like, I forgot. She went into labor and they were doing free will kind of thing. So she went ahead and got the boat out and waited for the husband. And by the time I realized she was waiting in the rowboat for him, I couldn't tell her to get out of it. It's like, We've committed to this. Okay. I also adopted them a cat. I was like, oh, okay. I adopted them a kitten. And they have, they live on the, in a beach house. So you go, like, immediately have to go up the steps because their house is on stilts. And I, the kitten wouldn't go up the steps to go in the house. And I was like, this is weird. I couldn't make them pick the kitten up to take it in the house. I was like, whatever. So I spent their money on building, like, a little house in front. Like, just a, it was, looks like a garden, greenhouse kind of thing. And I put all the cat stuff in there, and the cat's playing in there. And the next day after I adopted the cat, the cat had a birthday and turned into it like from a kitten to a full blown cat. And then it could walk up the stairs. It was too small to walk up the stairs, and nobody would pick up the cat. So I built it, I spent like half their money on this stupid cat house <laughs> that then they didn't need as soon as it became a full grown cat. I was like, I hate this game. Why am I doing this to myself? Uh, uh. I, I still think it's funny. First of all, you forgot about the rowboat issue. <laughs> and and now you've found out about the kitten to a cat issue. Yes. <laughs> it's a thing. 
Now I've learned that you need to write down the problems. <laughs> I mean, I should have known. A horrible game mechanic. Why would they not be able to have a, somebody pick up the? I don't know. Like I kept kitten. sending the people out to pick up the kitten, and they would walk down the steps and look at it and be like, "That's nice," and then go back inside. I'm like, "You guys, that's your new cat. Go get it." It's such a weird thing. Well, now that she's an adult too, like now that the cat's an adult cat, they the family won't stop playing with her. Like I'll go, where's this husband guy? He's starving and needs to pee, and he's outside with a laser pointer playing with the cat. I'm like, bro, you're starving to death. Go inside. Worth, worth it, hundred <laughs> percent. Sometimes yes, cats are very cute. I gotta Sometimes spend cat time. Yeah. Cat time. And then uh, we bought um, the Overcooked deal, Overcooked Two DLC, because my sister was. Finally back in town. She wasn't here last week, but this week she's back in town, so we played that. <sighs> Let me tell you, like, yes, cat time in Sims is great. Dog time and overcooked, that stupid Kevin dog. I, he could just, like, go somewhere else. I don't know. Onion King needs to adopt that dog Fuck out. Fuck off, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin, screw you. Fair, I think Kevin is the one in charge. The Onion King is literally just a figurehead. Yeah, he's a <laughs> puppet for Kevin. Because Kevin, like, you're doing the normal levels, and we did the, we started... Which, by the way, we bought the DLC thinking it was going to be, like, the the um, holiday Seasonal stuff. Seasonal updates. Yeah, which is, like, here's six levels, and that's it. We opened it up, and the map kept getting bigger. We're like, what is this? It's, like, literally the same size as the first campaign. So you spend, like, uh, 20 bucks I won't bucks go that on... far. I will say it's, like, uh, half of the original yeah, campaign. Yeah, I mean, it's there's still three, really big. There's six, th I think there's three stages, and three maps per stage so there's like nine new maps and Plus then the kevin three, levels yeah four new kevin levels and a whole bunch of new mechanics i mean it's, it's yeah a lot like, of stuff. you're used to having some weird stuff in in the regular oh levels where it's like you gotta use this teleporter to go from this place to this place the first kevin level we loaded up it's four separate rooms with two different colored teleporters in each room and you have to try to like take the corresponding colors and go places and so you can take ingredients it's i'm like Whoever thought of this hates whoever was supposed to play this game. Like Kevin, whoever hates thought of the, the fucking chefs. backpacks. Oh yeah, fucking there's backpacks everybody. now. So it's like we were doing a pizza level, and Chicken and my sister had the backpacks on, and the his backpack had pizza dough, and her backpack had cheese. cheese. I think. Yep. And so, like, cheese. I'm trying to run around chasing them. They're like, get a dough, get a dough, and they're literally running from me. I'm like, stop! I can't! It's mobile! It's on you! Stop telling me to get it if you're running off! Oh, it's so awful! It's so My bad! My sister and I ended up with backpacks in one level. It was a, a breakfast level where we had bacon and sausage. So she had the sausage backpack and I had the bacon and Chicken's the one yelling out orders. And at one point, he had told us to get one of each. So we are literally running in circles trying to get each other. Because <laughs> we're stupid. <laughs> I mean, we're just stupid. It was so fun. Uh, uh. That game will, like, never not amuse me. The game is a lot of fun. It is fun. What about you, Tiggum? What would you do, aside from, you know, being drug around with me? Well, I played WoW, and then I played Overcooked. So you've already taken those. And the only other game that I've played this week, which I have been putting a lot of fucking time into, uh, is Risk of Rain 2. Yeah, you City found that got it. To play and, it with. Yeah, City got it, and uh, I've started, like, I played a little bit with him, and that has really fired me up again to get, like, playing it again. So now I'm trying to, because they've released two new characters uh, since I last played it. So I have three characters that I don't have unlocked. It's the Mercenary, which you have to get to, uh, you have to make it through six stages, and then he, he has a chance to spawn a Celestial Portal, which you have to go into, kill yourself, and your run to unlock, to get him unlocked. Um, I don't know how you, oh, you need to, on one of the stages you have to destroy eggs, which summons out a giant eyeball looking boss. It honestly looks like one of the uh, eyeballs from Destiny, I'm not going to lie. It looks exactly like the fucking eyeballs from <laughs> Destiny. And, Crossover. Yeah, that, that dude killed me. <sighs> he was down to a quarter and he killed me at the end. Oh. Um, yeah, very upset. I almost had him. Uh, and then the other one, you have to take your your fuel cell from your escape pod from the first level, work your way all the way through. If you ever get dropped below 50% health, you instantly die. 
So you can't ever drop below 50% health or you just die. Because oh. your the fuel cell explodes and it's all over. And you need to escort it all the way to the, uh, to the level where the robot is. And then you've got to repair him and then you unlock him too. So I have been trying super fucking hard to get the mercenary. So I just picked the engineer. He's the guy with the two turrets. And I rush as fast as I can through the levels. Like, I, I, first thing I do is I find a teleporter, which I've also been able to find the teleporters super quickly now. Because in the distance, you can see, like, small little pixels of what looks like fire. And you could barely tell it. And if you see them kind of glistening, you could tell that's where the teleporter is. So I immediately go for that, throw it on my turrets and start it. And then use whatever money I've made to pick up whatever I can and leave instantly. I was doing 10 minutes per stage. I've broken it down to about 5 minutes per nice. stage. And I'm just like burning through them. running it. Well, I mean, that's kind of what the game is. But unfortunately, I keep fucking dying to bullshit. The last one I had going this morning, I think I was about 39 minutes in. And I was just on my cycle back through because it's 4 stages. And then you cycle back through and then you basically keep doing that. Um, and I was hiding behind a rock and the giant, uh, squid looking ones in the air, they do a giant AOE where you can see the bubble fill out. I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to get behind this rock and hide. So I get behind the rock and a fucking another jellyfish from behind me bumps me forward and I get put behind the bush be out from behind the rock and I get <laughs> one shot. Oh, uh. <laughs> so I just closed the game. Did you cry? I've, I've done, oh, I just closed the game. I, I, that is what I have to do. I get so irritated, where it's like, yeah, I'm doing it. I've, I've, I'm, I've got a good run going, and then I die to something like that, and it just makes me just alt F four from the game and move on to something I've else. I've seen him with his head on his desk a couple of times in the past week because bad things have happened like that. Just like I have been pushing so hard so to try sad. to get this character unlocked, and it's so fucking difficult. Well, I hope that you, you were playing. Can you were playing Kingdom Come last week, right? Yeah, yeah, last week. Okay. Have you put any more time in that? The reason I asked I that not. question is because it's the 11th anniversary for GOG, and I happen to notice that a lot of their DLCs are half price for that game. Really? <laughs> this stuff. Yeah. I, it's, the game is so fucking long, I'll probably get the DLC at some point maybe in the future, but I got a long... Chicken likes to, commit, Way to go. like commit to finishing games before he even looks at DLC stuff. Yeah, you'll be fine by then. By then, even the ones that are two dollars right now will probably be a buck fifty. So yeah, yeah, yeah. by the time that I, from the dollar, oh, the shit. penny barrel. <laughs> oh man, you guys want to talk about some news? Well, uh, sure. I mean, yeah, it's it kind of like some of it's idea. depressing. So the answer no is a viable option. Just saying. Well, well, you want to start with the depressing news? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, talking? I mean, I guess we should. We could get that out of the way and then move on to happier times. Which one's the, which one's the depressing one? Uh, it's news. That's like 90% of news. So. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't think I picked out that set of stuff. There's only, there's only, I would say, one that's, well, maybe two that I would All right, what's, your, what's, the, what's the depressing news? Well, you know, if you're going to put Troy Baker in there, it's got to be depressing news for her if it says no to Troy Baker in yeah. some way. Well, I guess we can get all that stuff um, out of the way. Yeah, Troy Baker um, has finally come out and said that part of the reason that he didn't voice Reese in Borderlands 3 was because that um, Gearbox did not agree to work with a union and he won't work outside of the union. Um, now, that's different than the story that we originally got from Troy. Yeah, which I'm a little Troy. frustrated about. Uh, the original story was the saying that he never asked. But if you read the article that we actually have, my interpretation of it uh, is that he was asked originally if he wanted to voice it again in Borderland for Borderlands Three while he was still working on um, Telltale's uh, Tales from the Borderland, um, and then it looks like he was never revisited because they they couldn't make any agreement with the union. That's the way I interpreted it, um, but I don't like the way Troy originally presented it. That's for sure. So, um, but thoughts on that, guys? Like, you're um, a big Troy fan. What do I you am. I, I agree with you. I don't like the way that it was presented that he was never asked when he, he was approached for it, but he was, you know, 
uh, part of the union, and I'm, I'm fine with him being part of the union because that industry needs it. And I think that it's, mm -hmm. yes. honestly, it's not a great look at this point for Gearbox to say we won't work with Union because it basically reads as we won't work with people that we have to abide by rules for. We want to pay bottom dollar for the most work. And that that's not a great look. But then again, nothing's a great look on Gearbox these days. Um, I, I just I can't help that. But uh, I think it sends the wrong message to say you won't work with the thing i also yes, think it's weird the way agree. that they phrased one of their parts of their statement um because they they say one of their parts of their statement is as a talent owned and talent led organization gearbox enthusiastically works to ensure uh fair play with everybody and it's like i, I don't know that you do if you won't work with certain people because you have to pay them a certain wage that that's not exactly and now I'm going to play devil's advocate Go here because what they're refusing to do, what they're refusing to do is work with the union. They couldn't make an agreement with the union. Mm. So, but they also, because they, because they're in Texas and they're a Texas based company, they cannot discriminate against an individual who wants to work with them, even though they are part of a union, which is what they stated. Okay. So in, in, but, but the union says you can't work outside the union. So it's just kind of a, if you don't work with the union, then you don't get these particular actors. And it's and, and to be fair, if you're part of that union, you've bought into the safety guidelines and, and the you, you don't want to cross those union lines because it, it, it kind of makes what you're trying to work toward moot in a way, right? Because people aren't going to worry about being part of a union if you're just going to go out and do whatever. But now... If you agree with make an agreement with that union, then you're you're working together with your fellow actors. You're supporting your fellow actors and everything else. And I like the fact that Troy Baker, who I think we all can consider one of the top paid, if not the top paid, um, current voice actor, is abiding by the rules that he wants to be part of mm -hmm. as well. And he's supporting his fellow actors that might not make as much as he does by not crossing that line, which, which I think is, is yeah. amazing. I mean, that's great. Um, yeah. it, and, and and so I think that in Gearbox's in Gearbox's case, they are trying to save money. They're trying to do things. For those that don't know, there are certain limitations that are set up. I think um, we discussed it beforehand. I think it's four hours is, is all you're allowed to work per day, and it's a certain amount that yeah, you're getting they, paid for that. Yeah, there's like a flat fee, well, and the union has say on how many hours you work per day, which I think is four is what they were pushing for, um, for voice actors and whatnot, but. Yeah, so I, I think that in in Gearbox's case, it's it's they're willing they they can do what they want as a company, but eventually, as everybody becomes more unionized in this industry, which it needs to happen, mm. it doesn't need to be crazy. It doesn't need to be where you know people are sitting there going, "Well, we need a million dollars for four hours." You know, I mean, it's it doesn't need to be nuts, but it does need to be to where everybody's protected and they feel like they have a legitimate job. Because there is, there's a lot that happens in this industry where people are working. You know, I, I, I think of it as kind of the, if you think of Christmas time, when you hire all these part-time workers for, for retail, and then all of a sudden you fire all of them, they know what they're getting into ahead of time. Mm -hmm. There's no union for that because everybody that's doing that is getting that as a part-time job too, where these people are making a living for this and they don't know if they're going to have a living after the game's released or not. Yeah. Um, and so that's where those parts need to be unionized too. So I think it's what he's what he did was important, but I think that Gearbox could have taken the opportunity to set an example, but instead they did exactly what Gearbox does, which is show that they're not willing to work with anybody and they're going to be a shit company. Yeah, and they don't and want I, anything <laughs> to cut into their bottom dollar and things like that. And it's like I mean I just Gearbox is not a great company to look at for how to run a company. So. No, no. Uh, th that that last statement, in that that paragraph that you read, I I looked which through one? his IMDb. Uh, we also strongly believe in hiring local voice actors whenever we can, which is why we're thrilled Troy's career really took off after. It really with does us. sound like they're trying to take credit for his whole career. I I went through <laughs> his IMDb, and this motherfucker has been doing shit for so fucking long in so many different things mm -hmm. everywhere. I I personally do not see. I think him, his first like, game was Brothers after... in Arms game. 
uh, that he oh, did man. like additional voices in. And I think that that's what they want to kind of take care credit for is they hired him in for that, which put him in, in places that he wouldn't have been able to have access to before that. Oh my goodness. He was in a bunch of animes in the nineties. Yeah. I mean, Troy's, Troy's been around doing voice acting for quite a while. A long fucking time. I don't even know when the first game. Going from from being a uh, musician in the studio next door to <laughs> to, to, to end up voice acting. Uh, he was you know? in. Uh, He's a hell of a musician Alchemist too. Video game in two thousand three, and then the next one, Legend of Heroes on the Trail. I don't even know what that one is. Blood Rain two. He was a main character. Mm. So I mean, I personally, I don't see. Yeah, he was in Brothers in Arms, too. Yeah. Or Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. So he was in other games before that. What year was that? 2005. Okay. So, I mean, I guess they're thinking his 14-year-long career that he's had so far, they're they're to blame for it. That's how that works? I'm, I'm thinking that one's that. probably not what skyrocketed him to where he's at now. I think uh, you probably give no, credit for that not. for a few other if games. If you look at everything after that, it's back to TV series. Like, nothing but TV series, and then another Brother in Arm games, and then more TV series, and then a couple other video games. Yeah, I, personally, I do, I'm do. i not going to put Troy Baker's success on Gearbox. I'm going to put Troy Baker's success on Troy Baker. Yeah. On his, his talent and his ability. I, I would yeah. agree with you on that. And I think that's a very Gearbox thing to do, though. Like, that, <laughs> yes. that is a shining example of how that company operates. Yeah, you're great and all because of us. So, you know, that's cool. I'm glad we were able to give you a platform. And I'm sorry we couldn't work with, you couldn't work with us now. Well, and I think that shows you the difference, too. That's the reason that we have unions is where the company itself is looking at the fact that we made you who you are. Where... The union is looking at the fact of we are an entire group of very talented humans that depend on each other to be they to want get to protect better. their you know each yeah, other and we want to protect like you know their their industry and I think that that's that I think it's you know telling it's where I yeah it's very telling you know to tell the tale huh uh, um, uh, 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 so I, I think that that's where it's interesting for this because it's not what Troy originally said. Um, but it is where it is very telling of, of Gearbox and their mentality of the fact that they don't want to work with a union. Hopefully they do in the future. Um, I think Randy Pitchford's got to be gone for that to happen. Um, but uh, yeah. because, I mean, he's not even willing to pay his own employees if they're doing voice work for him. So why in the world would he want to pay a union? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, and abide by what their rules are. So I, I just... It's, it's saddening to see this in the industry, but it's a continual problem. Like, I'm so tired of talking about Gearbox and Randy Pitchford and everything else. Like, every other week or every week, I we've wish got it something would stop, to say about them. But I really don't see it happening. Like, I feel like this is kind of their shtick now, is to keep you talking right. about them and keep their games in, in your, you know, the forefront of your mind and everything. You just keep doing stupid things, I guess. I mean, it's, but it's not like making money off of us for doing it. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, they're definitely not making money off of me. I'm one of the few people that actually stands on my principles and has refused to buy Borderlands 3. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just not going to support that company like that. No. Well, uh, speaking of Pitchford, there, and we have another article containing him. This is a wrap-up, though, to the, the whole legal battle, dispute, tussle, whatever the fuck you want to call it. With over one of the their last, former uh, lawyers, or, wasn't it? His, his, his close it friend. It was his best friend years. for like 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I, I, that's why I will say that what he said is probably true because somebody you know for 40 years knows you better than most people will ever know you. Yeah. 40 years is a real long time. The fact yeah. that your former lawyer and friend for 40 years makes comments that say you exploited Gearbox employees and property to fund his own private cravings and you've had employees come out and say the same damn yeah. thing that indicates to me that's probably the that case. that's true yeah yeah definitely but apparently but, uh, this was all settled and and called a messy misunderstanding you know it's like oh it's it's, the, it's fine to the both parties were not neither one was wrong or right we're just gonna say it's split down the middle it's uh, everybody and they're going to 
they're gonna they're solving it behind closed doors and they're not going to say yeah how there's it turns gonna out. be a non-disclosure i can tell you exactly how it turned out a new borderlands 3 game just came out and they he said he owed you three hundred thousand dollars he just paid you 500 mm -hmm. that's oh, yeah. exactly Here, how no, that shut turned up out. keep you keep the shit you know to yourself and go away yeah sign this nda right, cool. so that you can't possibly talk about it in the future well, yeah, but he's he's not going to worry about it anyway. He's been friends with him for 40 years. I'm sorry that we had this misunderstanding, a blow up after we had a beer, whatever the hell happened on there he's mad about. And it's like, well, and you're you've got to be kidding me. really hardcore Pitchford stands who are going to be super excited about this. Like, this exonerates him of all wrongdoings. It was all a misunderstanding, which means everybody else who's come out against him since then is also wrong because, look, he's a good guy. The court said he didn't do anything wrong. No. Get that out my face. Just because the court says, because you and your other, your friend, your former friend, have made an agreement behind closed doors and then signed NDAs about it, does not exonerate you from being shitty to start with and having a bunch of other stuff brought up against you as well. Like that, it's one thing does not excuse a civil the other. Case. It's a difference between a civil case and a criminal case. Civil case, the two disputing parties can say what they want and it disappears and anything that they said is just gone. Criminal case, they'll keep investigating, but it's not. It's just two people having an argument with lawyers involved and then they and then solved it. Yeah, but, one, it. One, but the other difference is too, so civil, civil cases work off circumstantial evidence as well. Mm -hmm. So it can work off hearsay you can say whatever you want that's on there and all it has to be is is people have to come to agreement whether they believe that's true or not versus criminal case you have to have actual proof that ha that takes place and happens in order to be able to to make a determination and then you have to have there can't be any reasonable doubt on whether or not that actually happens so in this particular case it's it's a civil suit and it's being ha everything's being behind closed doors again the dude's being paid off, and it's more than the three hundred thousand dollars that he was yeah. owed. So all this shit goes away, and I guarantee, I almost guarantee you, that if we were a fly on the wall, Randy Pitchford had nothing to do with this. It's the other part of the company that went to Randy and said, "You need to fix this now." Probably because mm -hmm. I mean, with honestly, with Randy, he's a loose cannon who feels like he can do whatever he wants, which is a trend right now in in people with power, and then they try to normalize mm -hmm. their behavior. And explain it away and that's exactly what's happening and what's going to happen is he won't have to normalize this all of his hardcore fans are going to be fighting on his behalf on on every forum um for things right. like this see he's fine he's fine it's normal no, there's no big deal it's like that's not normal and that's not cool he still did a bunch of other yeah. shit well there are mm -hmm. at least enough allegations enough serious allegations from this dude that should warrant to be looked into I mean, if somebody says something like that, it shouldn't be like, oh, well, I was, you know, whatever. Uh, we, we, we agreed to whatever we talked about. It's like, but what you said was pretty fucking significant. That should be looked into to make sure that it's not real. Because if it is real, it's a whole other fucking pile of shit to deal with. But n nobody's mm -hmm. going to do anything. It's crazy to me. Well. Like right. you said, every week. Can't wait to see what this turns up next week. <laughs> right? All right. Um, I guess other sad um, things. Bully 2 never got off the ground, says Rockstar. You talked about it last week, Oak. Now you know. He's Just talked never... about it a couple of times. I know. Now. talked about it a couple of times because I still believe, I, yeah, it never got off the ground. What they're saying is between 2010 and 2013, they were working on this. There was The premise was they couldn't figure out whether they wanted to make this more of high school college continue on with years whatever it just kind of fizzled out so what i think this is the information coming out now and the fact that you've got rockstar that's currently got their own um client that is that just came out mm -hmm. that this is their way of slowly promoting and boosting the fact of oh look this never happened and we're sorry but on the meantime i think they're still working on it i think that they're it's it's just because you can't do the the you know remember red dead redemption 2 the map accidentally got leaked mm. so i think it's this is just their way of promoting that on the back end of it somehow. i was i was gonna I, say it, maybe this is gonna lead up to a remaster but at the same time i don't think rockstar is interested in doing remasters or else they probably no. would have gotten on it to do a red dead one uh, to i be feel like bully 2 is like 
honestly like a side project almost like blizzard was with wow classic where they've got a team that's kind of playing away with on it, it but... and kind of working and it's like their job is to come in do the ideas and just kind of well, see where less, it goes the least popular of those games mm. like of the games that rockstar's done i would say this is the least popular of those open world games that they've done but this is the um, that's the best way to, to sell a game like this. Oh, it's mm -hmm. a sleeper hit. It was oh, it was pretty good. The first one was pretty good. Second one comes out in a fucking different like blaze of glory, and everyone's like, "Holy shit!" And then boom, you've got yourself a, a third hit and online mm -hmm. functions with it too. Red Dead Online, GTA Online, Bully Online. Come on. Mm -hmm. So uh, man, I, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be very interesting to see how this if this is that's what this is. They're eventually moving toward this. Um, and then, you know, what new IPs to come up there, but it goes back to, we've got, we've got, that'd be three worlds that they're giving us. What's going to be the fourth world that they're going to give us. And to be fair, I think bully would probably, cause RPing in, uh, rockstars worlds is th th huge, like absolutely mm -hmm. fucking massive. It's probably one of their almost main draw to get people mm -hmm. in cause people love it doing one like this would be it would be another one that would just draw people in even heavier my question and it would though, sell. well my yes. question though is this like and this is something that somebody in the comment section of this uh, article pointed out which by the way all of our stuff comes from Eurogamer so if you ever want to see what articles we're talking about one we link them in discord and two if you don't know you can just go to Eurogamer um, yes. but in the comment section they touched on the fact that we have such a, an outrage culture right now that making a game that it, it may possibly allow you to glorify violence in a high school setting uh, is is maybe not something that they can really do in, in a way that doesn't seem tone deaf. And I think that well, might be again, where you run it, into it. The, again, yeah, they talked about, about going thing. into a college But even in, even in college, you're still uh, giving a school setting, like an academic setting, a, a violent tone. And where you're fine with doing all sorts of crazy shit in GTA because that's, you know, out in the real world and, and whatnot, that's fine. Doing it within academic institutions has certain connotations, especially now, that are probably hard to touch on without making it seem like uh, you're inciting certain things or that you're I would be interested. things. I would be interested to watch the, the social development in a game like that. Like, yeah, you are free to do whatever you want and, you know, to be mean to people, but I wonder how many people would actually, you know, be complete dickheads to each other. A lot other, of people, or because they do it on GTA just, all the time. It's their outlet to be assholes. Not for the RP. The RP is surprisingly really fucking good. Like, they treat each that. other like they, they what they actually are. Like, the cops treat the criminals like people. Same thing back and forth. The gangsters, like, everybody. Like, even the rival gangs, like, sometimes it's a comedic moment, but there really doesn't ever seem to be, like... A heavy serious tone with the rp and whatnot which is nice it kind of keeps it but that's lighter, but that's within the, the context of it shooters. being an open world where they can just go do whatever if you're trying to write another bully game you are writing a, a storyline into that in which you will present opportunities for things to turn out very violently in a school setting and i could see why that's something that they are just like you know what this would be a pr nightmare if we tried this at this point, or they could do it. Like I'm a, trying to remember because it's story. been so long since I played the game, but there wasn't a, like you were a bully, yes, but it wasn't. But that's the problem. GTA you have so many is problems a now. million times worse. But you have so many problems now with kids in school being bullied to the point where like it's not un it's really incredibly unfortunate that it is not unusual to turn on the news and see that a kid, even as young as like eight or nine years old, has killed themselves because of bullies in their school. And that's, that's something where this is where we're at culturally and m putting that into a game might more incentivize people to do it in real life as well, which would, would it cause more accident than, than good. It, it depends Again, if I they go back commit to... to the bully story instead of like turning it to where you are a bully at the beginning and your character grows to not be anymore by the end. Like you get to see, I know people will just tear into it, calling it social commentary, but I mean, there's a lot of that in just about everything. You could pull. But, but I think that's you why you have to make it older. Well, you know what? You you could actually even do it. Hold on, outside the box. Technically, it doesn't have to be a school setting. You could do bullying in a business-like standpoint, and the the main character's female, and she actually and 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 so you're not following the same character, and she's female, and now she's having to adjust and and maybe she's set in the gaming industry. Cancel culture will say that you are canceled because you made the only woman protagonist in your ser your franchises a bitch, 
and you did that to target women. So I'm just telling you, devil's advocate, mm. that's how that's She's gonna... being bullied. But she's, she's having to readjust she's, because she's the one that's being bullied. If she's the one being bullied, then they're going to call him out because they're trying to make the only woman in the game a victim. Yeah, but then, I mean, I mean, a lot of it's women, really hard. But, that's but the problem that the, is here's your, here's your internet going. No, you I mean, because that because they, well, but I don't give a fuck about the internet, but, but if you're making a multi million dollar game that has to have a PR department to handle that, yeah, you do give a fuck. Mm hmm. They're making billions off of Red Dead. Or not they Red have Dead, a uh, fucking GTA. torture scene in GTA 5. You have a person that fucks a goddamn teddy bear in GTA 5. Are you fucking kidding me right yeah, now? There's a Who lot gives, of they don't care about that shit. shit. Okay. You I know mean, what? What about the people that? What about the people that build a bear? You don't think they had a fit about that? Shit? I mean, come I on. Hope, I mean, I hope most of the customers oh. of Build a Bear, which are children, have never seen that, but. Well, hopefully, with the way that uh, people go into uh, GameStops and just demand GTA Five for their little Jimmy anyway. I mean, again, yeah. if people stick to the actual ratings that are on games, uh, it's not going to affect the kids. It shouldn't. Yep. But I mean, it, it's probably why it's taking so long is because they're trying to find a balance in in a storytelling aspect. And depending on how much they want to commit to one side or the other. One side is going to get them flamed forever, it doesn't matter, and it's going to unleash the trolls onto the fucking world in a game like that. And the other side is going to be a much better mood and help people a lot, but it's also going to bring the trolls out on this side and they're going to flame Rockstar for being... They definitely couldn't take Being the, cowards and taking the, the social route. They definitely couldn't take the same approach that they did between Red Dead and Red Dead 2 because it'd be a prequel and your character would be in elementary school. So maybe not that. That's probably not the way to go with it. Definitely have to be an actual sequel set in a later direction. time. <laughs> yes. Uh <sighs> Or they could take the comedy maybe they route just, and make it a toddler. Maybe they just call it Bully 2, a good human. And then the entire time, you're nice to everybody and hug everyone as you go through. That sounds like a fun game. Oh, people would rage. Right. Or or it actually shows you how you get ostracized as a bully. Like, the more mean you are, the less help you get in the game. Like, you basically have to do everything by yourself, which makes it almost impossible. Do it that way. A bully's life is difficult. Yeah, get get used to it, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, speaking of people that need to pay attention to games before their children play them, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice I'm I'm torn on this article. Okay, go uh, ahead. I I, I kind of am too, but I'll I'll explain why. Um, Fortnite is under fire again. Again, uh, the reason why this time is because, again, people are talking about how addictive the game is. A Canadian legal firm uh, is pre preparing another class action lawsuit, and it's based on the fact that they're saying that, that Epic knew that they were knowingly creating a game that was very, very addictive. And to children. To children. To children. Um, the only problem I have with this is they're using the cigarette industry to to be a part of their argument in the fact that a, a Canadian court in 2015 class action lawsuit then basically stated that um, that they in what well, was a Quebec superior um, superior court determined tobacco companies didn't do enough to warn their customers about the dangers of smoking. Now here's where I have a problem. Okay. A video game I can turn off and delete from a game. There's no addiction other than a physical one mentally for the game. Nicotine, which is in tobacco, is an actual physical addiction that children would get into their system, which is totally different. I think so. Do and you would, not believe? Do you not believe in mental addiction then? No, I believe there's a mental addiction, but I don't believe it's the same as a physical addiction. No. But I think so. You don't believe that the symptoms from a mental addiction are the same as a physical addiction? No. Okay. I don't. But weren't you I believe on, they are. Weren't you arguing on the side of video game addiction being fine to be classified as a, an illness by who, like, a few weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, because isn't that... But it's not the saying, same though? as... it is. But it's not the but same as a physical addiction. But it'd be a similar thing where this is an industry okay, that would failed you agree, at Hold on. Would product. you say a video game is poisonous? To a mind, yes. 
would you say a video game is poisonous to a body? To a body? The mind is part of the body. To a brain? Yes. Would you say that nicotine and tobacco is poisonous to a body? Yes. Okay. One you can die of cancer from. The other one you can send mental help for. But you need, well, but you need and help for both. that's where I have an issue with it. But you need help for both. Yes, but I wouldn't say they're the same. Uh, and to be fair, with the kind of culture that we are in, where everybody has, uh, well, every, most people have some sort of mental problem that they are always looking to fix, mm -hmm. whether it be depression, and then they go to video games, and that's the only form of, uh, dopamine that they get in their life and when they go back to normal life it's just pure depression again and then they have to like in their mind they have to play Fortnite to feel anything that is a major problem and some parents some parents just don't see that and they fall like the kids just fall further and further away right so so what you argued for would, would be what Epic's argument would be which is this child already had mental issues therefore they became addicted to the game based on the fact that it was a crutch not because of the addictiveness of our game well i mean the so game theoretically is addictive, though. any game but any game could have caused that issue not just fortnite but i think that if you so, are aware that your game has um addictive hooks that will hook addictive personalities in and you still market it to children then that it does fall on you so i'm gonna be like that's why gambling to... isn't necessarily like you're not wow. casinos aren't advertising to children because that's something that they know like that's their whole niche is this will be addictive we want you in so that you never leave but my, my, Fortnite's my... like we want you in so that you'll never leave kids are the best market for that yeah, and I told I've already called that shit years ago. But the the thing the thing that really gets me is that if it is true that Epic hired psychologists and whatnot to help them to develop a system inside of their game to make it as addictive as possible, like how do you According spur out as much dopamine in the best way to get them into those moments as much According as possible? According to their statement at Parliament in the UK, they have none of those on site. Because that was part of the argument Parliament was making was the fact, are you not worried about the long-term effects towards children? Do you not have any children psychologists or anything else that work for you to determine that so you make sure that you don't run into these issues as the game is created? And they said, no, we don't have anybody that works on that. That was when they were in front of the UK Parliament. So, so they had a double-edged sword then that they didn't hire anybody to look into something like that. Right. Which is, which that would be, again, deniability because they didn't knowingly create a very very addictive game because they didn't discuss it with anybody that would have made that been able to make that determination based on actual scientific knowledge to be fair i so, don't think that they cared which would fall into negligence i don't disagree but you got to prove it yeah before. exactly it's one of those things but, where but, but, but i think really... that that's the, but, but again i think that that's where that's where you it falls into an issue in 2015, you have a class action lawsuit that was stuff that was found out in the 1960s about how addictive nicotine was. Mm -hmm. So it took it, it took 65, 75 years in order to be able to determine that, you know, this was a, that, that you needed to have a class action lawsuit to say that they weren't telling people that this was addictive. Now, I don't know about y'all and I don't know what Canada, what Canada was doing while U.S. had <laughs> all the Surgeon General stuff that popped up in 1965, the warnings on the side. Television commercials started and stopped uh, within a decade after that. Promoting to children, yeah. Promoting to children so it wasn't there anymore. So we've dealt 40, we'll say 40 years of in the U.S. of knowing that nicotine's addictive and all the PSAs and everything else that say don't smoke and everything else. And smoking's gone down in the U.S. So 2015, what was Canada's Surgeon General warning or whatever that they have on the side of theirs? Now, I was told the other day, tobacco that's that's in U.S. Uh, cigarettes and what's in Canada or the U.K. or whatever is not the same type of tobacco. I think ours has a bunch of chemicals that's added to it, to be fair. But... So I'm just wondering if, like in this particular case, that's information that had been out for 50 years. And if you can prove it in a 2015 court, you're dealing with something that's two years old. Can you prove it in a court and use a 50 year a case that's had 50 years worth of material? I just don't think it's, 
I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see how it ends up going. And and depends on what Canada's actual law system is that they've got set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, they I might be able to prove there, like they wouldn't be able to hear. It's, it's a different monster of the same variety. Like, back in the day, cigarettes, addictive. They knew it. They tried to market it to the kids, get them addicted for life. Uh, in this, it's it's somewhat similar yet different because they know it's addictive, but it doesn't harm anybody, so they are safer from retaliation from things like this because it only affects somewhat mentally and then, well, mentally and a lot of people's wallet too, apparently. Well, but, but, but also it could attention. end up causing, now think about this way too, even though Fortnite's a different beast, it could be if the lawsuit passes and everything follows exactly the way the 2015 lawsuit against cigarettes did, it is a possibility that every single video game then has a a possible addiction sticker on the outside Only of multiplayer it. ones because even the single player ones, I mean, if you get a, if you if, get addicted to a single player game like a one time through, I me. mean, uh, she's mildly addicted to him, but she it's because she needs escapism, which is a, its own form of problem, which we all have. Most video game people who get super involved have some form of escapism. It's what we look at to to get away, but we also But, but I think there's a difference between apart. escaping from the world and going, I have to play this, I have to play this, I have yes, to play this, I have to play this. Yes, so, and I think that that's is. where you've got very impressionable minds and they, they believe they have to play it. And I get exactly. that. And I understand that. Um... I think that, but it it is, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see where this progresses because it is, to to the regular world, video games are video games. It doesn't matter if it's multiplayer or single player or anything like that. It's going to be a video game is addictive. Therefore, all video games are addictive. Oh, yeah. It's the same way when they say, right. But as we get into it, video games cause violence because they have, because there are certain video games that have violence. All video games cause violence. It's a generalized statement that goes across the entire thing. All and people none who of play the... sports get hurt, but you break you down go. those sports, and then you start realizing that the injuries in these different sports are different things. Like, I mean, right. most soccer players aren't going to get concussions. They're not running into each other head-wise. I would say that, that uh, might but be But we had the ball, than, actually. Like, yeah, golf yeah, players. Yeah, that's fine. The golfers generally yeah. don't get concussions from playing golf. <laughs> there you exactly. go. It would be more golf. We do As, get concussions in ours. We're still very early. I mean, we're we're at the forefront. Give us about fifty years, and we'll do this podcast again oh when we're God. all old. We'll do this and podcast whatnot. from the nursing home. I won't and be we... alive in fifty years. I can tell you that now. Man, it's twenty nineteen. You could probably. Oh my no, it'll just be, by then we'll have the technology of like Futurama, so we'll just have your head in a jar, and you'll still be fine. Oh, that'd be cool. It needs to be one of the filters. Uh, yes. I think but but we're early on and all of this stuff needs to get sorted out into categories and whatnot. And I mean, yes, who is right? Gaming can gaming a gaming disorder where games are too addictive. Yes. But I also think that games like this is perfect for big companies cuz one it's not their fault if your kid plays all the time. Two, it doesn't physically affect your kid. And three, they get to keep making tons of money without any repercussions. I, th- I think it's important to state, too, um, for those that, that are, are listening to this, it's in, important you understand that in the terms of service for Fortnite, it actually says you can't sue Epic. Um, instead, it, it says that you have to reach ar- arbitration. Um, so, but now Quebec has a law uh, that's called the Consumer Protective Act that requires companies clearly disclose, uh, disclose the risk associated with products and services. So if, so basically the federal, that that province law supersedes the terms of service. So it'll be interesting to see how that part of it works out as well. Um, because I have a feeling no matter what happens here, it'll end up going to Canada's high court. Yeah, for sure. And what it says is it's sent, like this, this legal challenge is centered around uh, duty to inform like they want to get it out there that this game is addictive and if you start letting your child play it there is an inherent risk that they that this game could take over their life so be careful when they play it we are especially if they start playing two years into this monster two years and if you haven't figured it out with after year one are you Some serious? Are just, I'd say, but to be 100% honest, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and point this out specifically around Fortnite. Um, Fortnite was a very different game. 
it was a single, or well, it was a, a co-op tower defense game that did very poorly in early access. So they tacked on a free-to-play battle royale, like, as an afterthought because PUBG was taking off. And they even said that. We liked PUBG, so mm -hmm. we did this. They didn't really right. put much thought into this beforehand. So the, saying that they developed a knowingly addictive thing, I, is, I don't think it's going to hold up. Because they didn't. They were like, well, the thing we wanted didn't work out. That's a good, we were gonna uh, use I mean, the that's a really good point. That's thing. a really good I think, argument. I think that, that their job came into, once it was getting as big as it was, and they started figuring out how to market it, because they did, and then started targeting children for marketing, that's where their responsibility came in to go, we need to tell people that this game is something that their their children might get hooked on, or we need to bring in some psychologists to start looking at how this is affecting the people we're marketing it towards, and why this is becoming so big so quickly, because all it is is a battle war. Yeah, what's different about ours, and how is it going to cause yes. a problem? But That would have been good for them to take responsibility for I, something I, like I, that. I find this interesting, too, because... Because the argument that she just made was nowhere close to as good as what Epic was trying to say in front of Parliament. If they had said that... I mean, I hate to support Parliament, Epic. But... Parliament's, Parliament's Parliament dumb probably been shit like, at that point. They would have like, been like, oh, you're right. Okay, that's fair. But you should go ahead and start researching your yes. game and bring up models and right. whatnot and see how it works. They Instead, were like, their okay. lawyer, their paid law firm... <laughs> Looked like a a fifth grader trying to take a college senior exam. Like it was so bad. I mean, that's and honestly like, that's almost everybody Griff, that gets sent up in front of this. Griff section. sums it up in two sentences. Done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was it. Hire me. Oh, yeah. Um, it. Not Epic. I won't work for you Ooh. because that's principles. But you know, somebody else. I'll help you with your Ooh. PR stuff if you need it. PRH. I mean, that's, just good argument. that's completely fair too. It's completely fair. It wasn't originally designed for that. It was just something they did to to basically save their ass and get yeah. their other games sold. To to save their ass and ride the coattails of another game that did pretty much the same thing, but when it became popular, they really started capitalizing on it, and that's when it became a problem. Yes. Instead of like creating a system on how to manage their game, they're like, fuck that. Make more make shit, money? make more money. It's, honestly, Get more people playing. Fortnite is exactly how you should look at Epic as a as a company. What can make us a lot of money? Do we know how to do it? No? It'll still make money though. Let's start doing it and just adding things onto it until it makes us the maximum amount of cash, which is where they're at now. They've added so much stuff onto it and marketed it so much towards children, which is an easy market to hit, that they don't know how to handle it now. It's the same thing with their stupid store. We need a store. Why? Because they make money. Uh, okay, do we know how to do that? No. Let's put one up. Okay. Like, that's where they're at. <laughs> They're like, we don't know how this works. Let's buy exclusivity because then people will have to come to us, right? What do we do after that? I don't know. How about a shopping cart? No, that's too much work. Something else. Yeah, like, that doesn't make us money. We yeah, need, we need like, things that will make us money. That, I, I mean, now why do you think it took them a fucking year to get a goddamn cloud save? So I, cloud I'm just saying save. this is very indicative of how Epic as a company works is what will make us cash? Do we know how to do it? No? Okay, let's do it anyway because we think it might make money. Is it making money? Yes. How do we make more money? I don't know. Let's just keep stacking shit on. Is this a problem? No, just put stuff on. It's like, oh. Money, okay. money, 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 money. And the casualization of their game, too, is also a problem. That they knew what they were doing when they started that, too. When they started I making mean, it casual? Yeah, more casual so that more people can win, which means more people get dopamine releases, which means more people want to play and more people want to play more often. I still don't understand why there's money. not a built, like they have not figured out how to build in a ranking system into that oh. game yet to separate the casual players from the regular players. Because it doesn't make money, like she just said. If it doesn't make money, they don't put effort, but it, they don't but put it a lot of effort into it. It would still make a ton of it. It uh. still would make a ton of it because there's a lot of people that like to play, like, it, you know what's proof of that? The tournament that they had two months ago where you had a 15 year old when the three million dollars or whatever the hell it was again it's a kid though if they want that that was like the, their perfect fucking script that they could have written look you could be this 15 year old kid winning three million dollars look yeah all of you guys you guys aren't even 15 yet you get up there and start playing perfect marketing well but to be fair how old were you when you started playing video games like hardcore 
four? Uh, no, just started I, playing. I don't think I count like, for four. that. I was like so, four. But I never like yeah. I there wasn't competitive games when I was younger though. Like we all played casually because we enjoyed games and just had fun. And to right, be fair, we, I was we I don't know, man. Solo. You guys didn't watch me and my sister playing SSX Tricky and Need for Speed on the GameCube, okay? Hell, it was the only the, two games the... we had and those yeah, were but you very know what your addiction was? You know what your addiction was? Winning. That's what your addiction was. I can't help myself. I need to win. Yeah, you, you have you have a hyper competitive side. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. It's not great. Most of the fun that I had was like playing time splitters, putting on all the AIs, and then playing uh uh the the tag mode where they just run around and try to catch everybody on fire and we would just try to de defend as much as we can. I like played that was time the splitters game. one time ever. And I like I enjoyed it. But I forgot until recently how bad the controls were in that game and how difficult it was to like shoot things in the scope. It was horrible. <laughs> I don't know what we were thinking to enjoy that game as much as we did, but if they change the controls, if they reduce time splitters, I'll be happy. Jesus. Game was so, yeah, the, the games right. back then to the games now, uh, ba games back then were like passion projects and people loved doing what they did. Uh, projects now are all about return. Yeah. Got to return. Yep. Hell, you got to fucking multiply your return by 10 million for it to be even decent. Yeah. So. Games have to it's, sell it's, an unrealistic amount of copies to be considered a success. And if they don't, then they're gone. Yep. They'll move on to something else, which yeah. is why I have. Uh, such high hopes for THQ Nordic is because they're so willing to do minus the whole situation with Mark. Uh, never forget, yeah, Mark. Mark God said it was it, okay. Mark. Mark. It, Mark, we won't yeah, let you Mark. forget that THQ. We will not. But it is uh, nice, you're right, to see a company that will support passion projects and and actually encourage their Dark artists Siders to, do, was a to passion tell a story. Projects. You know, things like. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what they've said about um the Dark Siders thing with the DLC that you were talking Dark about. Dark Siders Genesis. Yeah, where it's like oh, we'll make yeah. DLC if if people want it and if it's successful enough to warrant it and everything. Like if that's what you guys want, that's what we're gonna give you. And that's, yeah, because they said no microtransactions yeah. at all, not interested. But if you guys are interested and there's enough love behind this, we will make DLC for you, and then you guys can buy it. But you have to show mm -hmm. us that you want it before we make it. And I wouldn't say so, that they're holding it hostage, where it's like, well, you must sell X amount of copies in order for us to do this. They're like, if if this game does well enough and you guys like it, then we'll give you more of it. If you don't like it, then that's exactly. okay. You know, that's what we were doing here, is trying something out. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that I really cannot, like, a hostage situation for things like that. It just feels very awkward because it's like, no, no, we're just going to invest in it if it does well. And if it doesn't, then we're not going to invest. I mean, that's, you, the consumer, speaks to the, the uh, company. Yep. And that's how it should right. be, too. And you have to remember that you speak loudest as a consumer with your wallet. So if you were like, I don't like all of this stuff Fortnite and Gearbox are doing, but you went out and spent $30 on a, a Fortnite scan and you bought Borderlands 3, that's you, you have zero voice. Stop complaining. You know, but yep. you have to Give it away when you, you have well, to. Unless you have the addiction that they were talking about in the first place, in which case, seek help. Yeah. Yes, please seek help if you need it. But... Mm -hmm. Speaking of uh, All right, let's passion move on. projects and interesting art, there's a, a crossover with uh, Monster Hunter World and Resident Evil. Come on, it's just... both Capcom. I what, well, I mean, I get expect? that it's the same company, so it's like, yeah, okay, but those two things do not seem to share much to intersect. Like, that's but a weird but, okay, choice. This is. This is one of the cross the crossovers that they've done. They've done Devil May Cry, Horizon Zero Dawn, Devil Street Cry Fighter, makes which I think is me. weird. Because and the Witcher. Because Devil May Cry, you're, fight, you're a devil hunter who's fighting monster things already, which is kind of the whole shtick of Monster Hunter. But then let you're me, like... Let me finish with these that are on here, okay? Because Street Fighter, hello, I'm going to fight, I'm going to beat up one of these things. Yes. Final Fantasy, I get. Very similar art style. Mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed, really? Yeah, that's let a me, weird Let one. me pull out my blades. Don't worry, this next uh, one's even better. Mega Man. Oh, yeah. Mega Man. Pew, pew, pew. Got Let's em. do a crossover Mega Man. Are you serious right now? <laughs> yeah, that one's weird. The Street Fighter one stands out a little bit. The Resident Evil one stands out. I mean, the Witcher one, okay, that fits. That's fantasy stuff anyway. I didn't, it, I didn't know about the Assassin's cross... Creed one, to be fair. 
<laughs> Honestly, it feels like they're uh, almost doing it like Smash Brothers style, where they're yeah. like, "Who wants to come into Monster that's Hunter? Really we can build your assets." Like. Now that you mentioned that, that's exactly I, now what I will it is. say. I still what I will say this: there is a game that is coming out that is a it's a card battle game similar to, to what you would see with like, Hearthstone or one of those. Oh, okay. Okay, and on that game because I kept thinking it was a fighting game, I had to figure out that it was a, a card game because I I wouldn't get in line because the lines were so long. We got through, but I saw it at PAX West, and it would have all these people from these games that you would know, Mega Man, all these different games that are out there. And I'm like, what is Capcom doing? I don't understand what they're doing. But it's a card game, and it's got, like, everything. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's got Dante. It's got, like, a, yeah, it, it has it's a like dinosaur they're, they're of some sort. I can't them. remember everything that was on it. And I was yeah. like, are you kidding me? But it's a card game. And I'm like, what a mixture of groups. Well, it's, it's their I, franchise I, I thing, though. But that's, like, the same the same idea as um, uh, Super Smash Brothers, which by the way, this week Jeff Kaplan yeah. said that if uh, Nintendo wants to put in an Overwatch character in Super Smash, they can have anyone they want. It's yeah. like anybody that you want, you can take them. They love Nintendo. Nintendo is awesome. If you want yeah. a character, just take them. You're good to go. So well, Overwatch go. is coming to Switch, right? I think yep. it's already it's there. already out on Switch. Is it out? If I'm not mistaken. I'm feeling pretty confident. Ollie asked us if we were going to get it. Uh, October fifteenth is when it's coming okay. out. So okay, so he I meant feel in the like near future. I would be interested to see how smoothly that runs. Honestly, it's probably going to run pretty well. You'll probably get. I mean, 30 it, FPS Rocket League regularly. was a little choppy. Was it? So I'm interested to see how smooth that would move. Interesting. Yeah, but Blizzard loves making it so that their games run on just about anything, whether it be a potato well, or a high. It'll probably well, I will run say, on a fucking potato. I will say, now it's a different style of game, of course, but I will say Diablo 3 runs really well on the Switch. Like I like said, it they feels love like to it optimize was built for the Switch. Yeah, uh, I feel everything. like it was built for the Switch. Uh, well, which, speaking by the way, the Monster of, Hunter uh, well, thing is November. Would you would ex yes. expect it to be October because Resident Evil spooky stuff, whatever? Nope, just missed the spooky month by a little bit. November. <laughs> spooky month? Uh, what... One of the things that we've talked about several times is PS4 finally getting crossplay across all their games if possible. All of them that are possible, let's see if we can make it happen type thing. They've had this entire feature um, in beta. It's reportedly out that it's actually being handed over to uh, developers now to where they can actually make crossplay a thing. Of course, finally, uh, as, we, as we know, Fortnite's already part of that. Rocket League's part of that. Um, uh, I feel like there's a couple other games that are that are... Um, that way that I've played. I know recently. Call of Duty Modern Warfare is going to be uh, cross-played. My question is, are they going to allow Minecraft to be? Uh, it says first in line is Fortnite, Rocket League. Oh wait, Fortnite, Rocket. Those are already uh, played. Dauntless yeah. Paladins. Dauntless are the Paladins. Ones. Yeah, those are the ones yeah. that are currently going. Yeah. So I'm wondering if I'm wondering if they're doing Minecraft because to play on. Oh, here, 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 they Microsoft's... were upset about the Minecraft one. That's like, the one that's part yeah. that we got to protect our players thing. Yeah, because oh, because of the Get fact ready that to it walk was that back and pretend it, it, it because never you have happened. to log into a Microsoft account in order to be able to play Minecraft. It, it even says right there that they are go, uh, Microsoft's going to lift the restrictions that they put on the micro or PlayStation Four. So I there guess you, you won't like, have oh. to sign into a Microsoft account. If that's the restriction. Yeah, I think so. So they're but like, hey, you want to play now, thing, now, Sony? Copy. Where we're good to go. Really what, they're going to put Fallout 76 on. No, I'm saying Bethesda stop no making us sign into our Bethesda account to play a single player game. You would still have to sign into Microsoft in order to be able to play with your friends. That's the mm -hmm. whole thing. Because it's a Microsoft, because the, the it's, it's a attached Microsoft to your service. Microsoft account. Yeah, it's on their server. So I'm not really maybe sure what other restrictions Maybe they'll just mask it as another. Maybe have. they'll just mask it as like the the Minecraft account, and they'll be like, "This is not a Microsoft account. It's it's a Minecraft account. That's just." Which they might do, or they're just going to let you sign into your Sony stuff, and then you'll have to link your like. Oh, maybe, if it's maybe cross they could do that servers. link account so that you have a Sony account, but it'll link in with the Microsoft accounts. Yeah, your Minecraft account. Yeah. Minecraft account. Sony and Microsoft account. Blah, blah, blah. I can't wait for one day where we just have our video game accounts. Everything yeah. is just listed to one account that we play on. Mm. Everything. I'm sure there's an app for that. Isn't I'm sure they there doing... is. Is this not the same thing that No Pants was talking about with like a PS Now being able to stream to your PC? Is this the same thing? No. He had mentioned that no, to no, me no. earlier this week, and I was like, "Yeah, we'll talk about it." And he sent me an article or sent an article. It's 
It's called PS, PS now, now has been able to. You've been able to do it. Oh, it's, I haven't read it yet. I'm sorry, to... no pants. I'm sorry. No, but you you have to have a PlayStation Four controller in order to be able to make it work, which is why I never got PS Now on the PC. Oh, aren't they not um, optimized though? The PS Four controllers to run on a PC, isn't it? Wasn't there? I mean, some they issue? are. Okay. Yeah, they no, are. No, they're, they're you, uh, can, you can run on them. Okay, you could. Okay, good. You can download them. Um, but you're gonna have to download their uh, their app too. Mm -hmm. You gotta download Which, another launcher, everybody. It's the PlayStation launcher now. Hey, that's fine. I got the Xbox launcher, the PlayStation launcher, and my Steam launcher, and my Battle.net launcher. Oh, my Ubisoft launcher. Oh, my Origin launcher. Oh, my Bethesda <laughs> launcher. Uh, where, where do I stop? Oh, my GOG launcher. Gonna, my Glyph launcher. Gonna, I've got I've got four monitors. I'm gonna put all the launchers in one. Just so I know where they you're, you're not gonna be able to fit them in one. You're gonna have to probably run them across all four. Oh my all god. The icons. Like, oh see, God. this is my launchers, and these ones over here, and these ones down here, <laughs> these ones over here, and then I wrote these on a piece of paper because I couldn't fit them on my monitors. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Remind me to write them then to be able to just hit the search on that. Oh my God! I just wanted to make sure that we covered it because no pants had asked if we were going to. Yes, uh, I feel like they had to. Uh, play Sony had to get their games on PC. Had to. They were missing out on such a huge market. I mean, but they were already month, getting some of their properties over there via Epic Game Stores because they just had the Quantic Dreams games show up like over the summer. So they were kind of doing that anyway. But I guess they figured they weren't making the money. Yeah, but directly that's not off first party, is it? No, yeah. well, I guess they. Yeah, to they be fair, Epic is they're not just a third party exclusive. Yeah. 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 They're not making that much money off of Epic. No. I mean, unless Epic's which offering sure them is... handfuls of cash. Cause... Probably. Which in my, the reason it's lasted as long as it had could be one of those things where it was a, a thing inside of their um, contract that actually states the fact that they couldn't have a... That it was a console exclusive and never said anything about PC. So therefore, they were able to take that over there. And now Sony's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Oops, we made a loophole. <laughs> Nobody look at this. Yeah. <laughs> so now they're like, oh shit, we better put shit on PC and then make sure it's in the... the what if that was the there, case? What but... if that spurred the whole thing? It was like, oh no, they figured it out. Oops. <laughs> right. Oh no. Uh, now that everybody's moving over. Uh, that's okay. funny. All right. Uh, our final article that we've got here is, of course, Destiny, Destiny related-ish. It's Bungie related, which is um, basically Destiny, Destiny, which is really popular right now. Everybody's looking at it. Bungie goes, hey, 2025, new IP. That's what we're looking at. 2025, a new IP. My so, question on that before you get too far into it, because I haven't read the article and I'm sure you'll probably get cover this. I'll just throw my question out now. Is Wasn't it mm -hmm. Bungie that said they wanted Destiny to be a 10-year game that you were going to be playing? Activision did. Okay, that's why I was asking that. I was like, who said that? Was it them? Or was it them? Okay. It was, Activ it was Activision. And to be fair, we're six years into this journey. So, four more years. And then they would be when like, well, Destiny we did ten out? years like we said we were going to. Prison sentence over, we can do something new. 2013, wasn't it? Or was it 2014? I don't remember, to be honest. Was it? September 9, 2014. Okay. So, yeah, we're so just after five years six in. years in. So yeah, five years. We'll be I just wanted to cover that. Years. Carry on. The, my only, my only worry about this is, but they can still is, support Destiny and make something new. That's true. That's true. Yeah, the, yeah, they can continue to support because they, they've basically said that they want to be a larger company, and the only way they can do that is to increase the amount of IPs that they have. Um, so they've got to be able to do that, and 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 Destiny's going to support that. Like Destiny's going to put in there. But if you remember, and we covered this, I think once before too, that NetEase. Gave a hundred million dollars to Bungie to yeah. help them build a new game. So, which I'm gonna um, be a hundred percent honest, that has me worried that they're going to put out a mobile game. Here's our new idea. I don't disagree it's with mobile. that. Enjoy all those microtransactions. I don't disagree with that. Um, I, I I'm kind of concerned about the fact that that's the case. Um, and it's a NetEase revealed that the studio would begin the creation of new worlds as part of the deal. So NetEase is in charge of making the the worlds. So that almost sounds like it is going to be a mobile game because yeah. NetEase is traditionally is mobile. mobile. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For those that don't remember, 
the new Diablo mobile game that we still have not gotten because Ooh, of the backlash that was there in the first phones. place was being created by NetEase. So, um, yeah. This uh, year will be it's the good. big year for Blizzard in that respect. Oh, that's fine. If they can pick themselves up after that shit. I do find it. I do find it weird though that NetEase invested a hundred million dollars into Bungie, and Bungie separated from Activision because they didn't want to be owned, but they took a hundred million dollars. <laughs> It's from a company. And I'm like, I mean, it's one what? of those things where you're like, I'm an entrepreneur. I made my own business, even though I took the startup money from a loan shark. I mean, it, I, it right. feels like that. That's how that reads is I left yes. so that I could be an independent business owner who sold my soul to the devil because I needed the money. Like, well, it's one of those things where, I mean, if you want to go out on your own, you're going to need some investment yeah, from you somebody. Need it's not like... Mr. Super Big Rich well, guy and the is going like, here's a million, there's a hundred million. The Do downside is Bungie left Microsoft. They're like, here's Halo, all right, packing our bags, have a good day, we're off to make Destiny. And then left them, partnered with Activision, and then went, we, we don't want to be owned. It's like, what did you, didn't you just, so that you had more freedom because Microsoft and then, yeah, did, it made did no you sense. not, like, why did you make the Pikachu face? Like, that's it. That's what happened is Destiny. They were like, we want to leave this big company. We're going to go partner with Activision to make Destiny. Pikachu face. Because it's the same yep. thing. Like, it's crazy. Why, why do you uh, see that the happening? First, and then they just the say they're Destiny doing it again. PC? First Destiny was not on PC. Yeah, I, was like, I don't think so. I think was that console was console. Alert. Then, okay. Console. Then they made Destiny, or they partnered with Activision so Activision could get another game on consoles. And then... Bungie saw that as a chance to get on the Battle.net client because they needed somewhere to go when they moved when they transitioned to PC. Because I guarantee, at the very first meeting, they were like, "All right, we need to be on PC too. We got to make sure that we cross everything." But they never got there until Destiny Two, and they were Maybe. lucky enough well, to, to have. Well, to be fair, they had the first Halo on PC, <laughs> and then they went away. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, well, that was. I think it's because Microsoft was more yes. trying to sell their consoles. They were, they were and that's exactly else. why it was. But to be fair, the first Halo. But, being but on it's PC also was... the difference between the person that was in charge of Xbox mm -hmm. before and the person that's in charge of Xbox now. Because <laughs> yep. Phil Spencer understands gamers, and people can say what they want about the man, but he's changed mentalities. Like the 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 way the Xbox One was originally set up before he took over, where it wasn't going to have a drive. It was going to be online all the time. There was going to be no backwards compatibility at all. All Connect that stuff was, was his predecessor. Yeah, and so instead he turned around and went, let's scrap this. Some of the stuff we're going to have to keep because we've already built the shit. We have to move forward with it. Let's see what we can do. Connect. Yeah, so, you know, I think it uh, it worked out well. Um, so the Bungie CEO, Pete Parsons, exactly what he said was he wants, he wants Bungie. Um, they're aiming to be one of the world's best entertainment companies. Um, and which they're wanting to do by 2025. We have, they have a pretty specific path and to make sure we transform Destiny and, and that we have other franchises within the marketplace by then. So it sounds like it's gonna be before 2025. Yeah, they want we're actually things, gonna get to, yeah. but they're saying by then for sure. Yeah, yeah so I mean, it'd be interesting to see if we maybe get a couple. One of them might be mobile, but let's see if we get a couple that are in there and maybe within the next two to three years, because it's usually about a three year um, uh, production on most video games. So you could see within 2022, at least an announcement for a new game. I would yeah. love to see so, them try new new genres too. Like, uh, to be fair, Bungie really has figured out great mechanics for shooters. Like they yeah, have some the of the best gods. feeling shooting. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm not saying that is a weird political thing, but uh, you know, they figured out that mechanic really well. They know what feels nice, yes. what doesn't, what works, what doesn't, even if they have balance issues and whatnot. And the other thing they're really good at is they understand good stories. They just don't... With Destiny, they didn't tell it cohesively enough at times. Um, and, and I'm not saying that overall, once you look back at it, but they've made some real missteps by having, in the first one, half their story was just codexes that you had to leave the game to go which, find. Which I would blame on Activision. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, because if you remember, people were breaking into the the cave or whatever, and able to the see the parts of the game that were completely removed, yeah. Yeah. Um, in yeah, order I, to be able to have DLC. I agree with that. That's probably largely an Activision thing where they're like, cut this up so that we can resell it to them. But that's something mm -hmm. that I would be interested to see how Bungie handles now that they're gonna 
hopefully do things more on their own as long as NetEase is not trying to, you know, be right over their shoulder a la Activision or EA. Um, if they can do it themselves, what they make will be so interesting. Because they, they understand I, I storytelling do. and they understand mechanics. What I do find interesting that they ended up doing um, is, and it's actually something I wish Dauntless had done better, because um, I really enjoyed Dauntless, but there was no plot to go along with Dauntless. It was literally you just building your character up and going out and, and killing the monsters. Um, is they have their season pass that's there, but you earn that season as you go through. It's not you're buying the season in order to be able to, to upgrade it. I mean, I imagine you can probably go to the store, buy some silver, and end up upgrading it somehow. Mm -hmm. um, but the the thing that I really liked was, is as so you've got your main power level, but then you also have a regular level that's there too. And it's it'll actually say season two level. So it says season two, and then it'll have like, you'll start off with a one and that unlocks something. And then it takes you forever <laughs> to get to two and you unlock it. But if you complete bounties and things like that, you up, you go real quick. So once I found out that I could do it that way, then I just started, I just put a bunch of bounties on because you can have like 20 bounties going on at one time and you just go out and, and play the world. All right. So uh, I think that that's where they did something that was very unique for their style, but it also, uh, if you play the game, you're going to unlock it and you're going to unlock it quick if you know what you're doing. But I think there's probably an option there for people to be able to buy that too, just like it would be for some of these other people that have those seasons. But it's not buy the season pass and you get all this for free. It's, you know, go in and earn it or you're going to have to pay for silver if you want to do it otherwise. So I think I, I like it a lot. And even to upgrade your weapons now, because one of the things that they have, like you like this skin, you like the fill, this weapon, everything else, but it's powers, let's say 750 when you first start out. But you're now 900. You don't have to get rid of that weapon. You can upgrade that weapon, and you just have to have a little thing that allows that to happen, and you unlock those as you power up, too. So it's, you know, I think that that's kind of a, a cool way to do it. And, and I don't remember seeing it. It must have cut, happened in Forsaken, and since I don't have Forsaken, it's not there, which, again, is annoying because you don't get Forsaken, even though you buy the new one. So that's weird. it's very strange. So there's a whole part of the plot line that I don't get. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's not there. Starting off, I have no clue what's going on, but cool. So, um, but I, what I'm most interested in for their IP, does Bungie become the sci-fi people? Because that's what we know them as. They play, they've done Halo, they've done Destiny. Can they branch outside of that to create something new? Like, Think of what Rockstar's done. Rockstar's, like we were talking about last week, has created a modern-day open world. They've created a Western open world. They've also created, um, you know, it's modern day, but as a kid in school, modern world. So can they branch outside of that, or is that all we're ever going to know them as? Because to me, I'm looking at it going, I, I like all their mechanics. What can they give me that, that I don't get normally? Right. Well, first, <laughs> thought about it. If they really wanted to be assholes, they could create a competitor to Call of Duty <laughs> in a way that's actually quite good because their mechanics are so Ooh, fucking Ooh, that sound. would definitely leave a, a sour taste since they broke right? away from um, Activision. To compete against Activision, right? Um, but I am interested to see where they end up going from this. Do you? How do you branch out away from that? Because all we know them as is first-person shooters. So do they get away from first-person shooters? Um, I mean, as you know, long so as Halo making... originally was put something that they're passionate about making and not making content based on market trends say that we need to branch out so because you're going to be able to tell mm -hmm. like if they're making a game they're not happy with or you know content that they're not happy with it it's pretty obvious or it will mm -hmm. be pretty obvious it's like well westerns are cool because red dead's out so i guess we got to make a western like as long as they're being true to to their core then i think that they'll be fine I think they need to do something unique. I think that was what was really great about Halo when it was first released. It was something like none of us had ever seen before. And I think it's yeah, what made it Yeah, but it's hard to do that in this day and age because we've seen almost I, I everything. I disagree with that. I, I disagree with that. The guy that created A Way Out and, and Two Brothers and stuff like that, he's very innovative on how he does things. And I think that you can be innovative 
in in new ways. You can expand upon what other people have done or what you've done, but be innovative about it. Um, and I and I think that Bungie, you know, you give us a good storyline, mm-hmm. which they've done in the past. They give us a good storyline, and and on top of that, it give it a little bit of innovation or a little bit change in gameplay. They just got to figure out a genre in order to be able to do it in. Yeah. Um, you know, because Halo originally was supposed to be an RTS, um, which we eventually got the RTS version of it, but um, people didn't care with, for it as with much. Halo Wars. Do what else? And people didn't care for it as much. It didn't do real well. I did. I, did. I liked it, but you know, it's. I, but I also understand why people didn't. You know, that's not for everybody. I know you're not an RTS person, but I am, and so I enjoyed that part of it. I thought it was really well honed for a console, which was weird for RTS. Um, so I, I just find it. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do between now and 2025 we get to find out so again i hope within the next two to three years we at least get a teaser trailer for whatever they're working on and i think it would be cool if they went exclusive microsoft just for old time's sake i don't <laughs> think they would i mean i'm fine with them going with everybody i just don't want them to do what they did with like the first destiny where there was a lot of exclusive content to playstation that was a timed exclusivity kind of thing I wish they would stay away from that, but I wish a lot of companies would stay away from that. Like, timed exclusivity well, doesn't we, serve your community. Well, I think and that's been proven, though, that that's Activision. Because Activision's continue to do it even with the new Call of Duty yeah, that's coming out. Yeah, no, so I don't it's, disagree. It's going to be, that's that's just completely a Sony Activision thing. And, um, I mean, that's the reason you have those people that are that are Infinity Ward going, that's above our pay grade, yeah. not us. But, um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see. Well, we really got to wrap this up because I just realized we're already at just about an hour 40. Um, yes. So we got to gotta move this along because I still got to record a couple of Red Deads. That's fine. I would like to throw this one last thing because I saw oh, it oh, earlier. Oh. Um, yeah, go Reggie ahead. Reggie Filzamani is being inducted into the International Video Game Hall of Fame class. And he is only one of four people that are getting the Walter Day Lifetime Achievement Award for his work in the video game world. That's pretty cool. Yes. That's also, awesome. I learned that the video game capital of the world is in Iowa. Oh, okay. Uh, Arumwa, Iowa. Considers Atumwa. itself the video game Atumwa, video game capital of the That's world. That's where Radar O'Reilly is from in MASH, by the way, is Atumwa, Iowa. Hmm. But yeah, apparently that is where the video game... Oh, okay. Well, today we it's all because, learned. Thank uh, you for being so educational. Is the home to Twin Galaxies Arcade, which has become the epicenter of new, numerous competitions at arcade games, and it's basically turned into a museum where they induct some of the most prominent people in the uh, video game world. Which there are only four people with that award: David Bishop, programmer and vice president of Namco; David Crane, programmer and co-founder of Activision; Reggie Filzamani, and Steve. Uh, Wozniak, yeah. co-founder of Apple. Wozniak, yep. Wozniak. Those are the only four that have gotten that award. The Woz. So. Well, congrats so. to him. He's a great dude. Yes. Yes. All right, let's get awesome. out of here. Come on, man. <laughs> we Come do on. appreciate let's everybody go. hangs out with us each and every week at Infinite Respawn. As always, you can check us out on Twitter at Infinite Res PC. You can check me out personally at MDB Oak Tree. Check out Griff. At Griff Slidem. Check out Chicken. At Elite Chicken 313. And as always, you can check out Baca at Baca Pickle. Uh, hopefully, he'll be back next week. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, make sure that you go to Griff's YouTube channel, where she's currently playing through Red Dead Redemption 2, trying to not crash horses. Not being successful. Maybe being successful. I don't know. As Probably not. Possibly. I don't know. <laughs> and then go to twitch.tv forward slash elite chicken 313. Chicken, you got wow this week. Yes. Yes, yes, for sure. No, I'll wow this week, so he will wow you with his skills. Mm. Oh, yeah, watch me just sit there and spam Sunder. <laughs> <laughs> also, make sure you go to Mixer.com forward slash MDV Oak Tree, where I'm on five days a week, and uh, you can check me out there. For Infinite Respawn, I'm Oak Tree. I'm Griff. I'm Chicken. Bye. Bye. Uh, like we all waited for it. <laughs>